Our good friend Joe Lindsay joins us now from Lviv in Ukraine. Regular TVP and Rock Racon viewers know him all too well. But for those watching us for the first time, Joe is an American journalist who hasn't left Ukraine since 2020 and has been reporting on the war via his Ukraine Freedom News website. And if you are in the US, you can also catch him weekdays on Chicago's WGN radio. Welcome back to TVP World. Welcome back to Rock Racon Joe. Uh, there is a lot of discussion in the international media, among politicians um, in the West, about peace talks, about uh, getting to the negotiation table. Uh, but what people think in Ukraine about this war uh, isn't in line with what the Western politicians say about negotiations. What's your take on this? Absolutely, Michal, great to see you. Hello from Lviv. We just finished an air alarm. All is calm here at the moment. Uh, you know, when uh, President Zelensky spoke in Washington last week, uh, I mean, it was, it was he get, delivered a very powerful message, but I think it's one thing we have to really remember that Ukraine, especially since 2014, uh, since the Maidan, the Revolution of Dignity, uh, is a democracy in the deepest sense, and, and that the people rule, the people govern. And, uh, and so... <laughs> President Zelensky, uh, when he spoke in Washington, but the Ukrainian people, and it's the Ukrainian people who don't want to negotiate. They want their borders restored, not only to February 24th of this year, but to 2014 when Russia took Crimea. And the argument is, you know, when Russia took the, the Crimean Peninsula, Ukraine's military was very weak. The country was weak because the people had just kicked out the pro-Putin oligarchs. And when Putin took Crimea, the world did nothing to stop it. Um, and, you know, they, they had some harsh words against it, but nothing to stop it. In fact, since then, there was even a World Cup in Russia, you know, while Russia was occupying Ukrainian territory. And so Ukrainians have faced with, and, and you, you know, the Poles know this too, faced, you know, imperial and tyrannical Moscow for a long time. And they know that if you appease them, uh, the problem's not going to go away. And so, and especially now after the war crimes and the atrocities. And uh, Michal, I was just looking at video fresh from Bakhmut uh, from our Polish reporter, Vitek. And I, I was in Bakhmut in June. It was scary then. It's horrible now. Smoldering buildings. Uh, yeah, the incredible. whole city absolutely destroyed. I saw, and, I saw Vitek's so, report on, 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 on TV Republika. I mean, it's, it's something absolutely... Uh, well, when, when you see the buildings that are, that are burned, when you hear the constant shelling, I mean, every second you hear the, uh, the bombs setting off and you see people living over there in those circumstances, that's just something incredible. What is, what is the meaning of, of, of this for the general population in, uh, in Ukraine? Well, I, I think that there's a sense that this is the, you know, this is clearly the point of no return. And anytime, you know, Russia, in fact, after Zelensky's, you know, amazing uh, reception in Washington and his very powerful speech where he put himself on an equal level uh, as a statesman uh, with, with the president of the United States. And after that, uh, Putin said, oh, he was ready to negotiate and talk. And but we, we know this. I mean, remember the weeks leading up to February 24th. Putin, Russia said, the Kremlin said, oh, we're not going to invade. We can never trust what they say. And if there is any peace talks, it's probably Russia just stalling to prepare something worse. Uh, and so, I mean, the, 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 the I don't know if it's the reality is, and I think Ukrainians say actually this, they've been, been through enough suffering already. And so the idea is we must, everyone here must push through with the help of the West, push through to victory. Uh, and that, that, that's the only option. Uh, and I think a lot of people in the West are uncomfortable with that. But the, the more we're uncomfortable with that, the longer this is going to go on. Uh, as Henry Kissinger, the former Secretary of State, said a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, the world needs Russia in this to have an equilibrium. He said Russia is, uh, is scared. Oh, I forget the exact words he used, uh, but a very violent, uh, violent country. But we still need it in the equilibrium. And I think I think many people in Eastern Europe say, no, we don't. You know, we, we've uh, you know, it, it, we, we, we can live without a tyrannical neighbor. And this is the moment to, to fix that. Uh, yeah, so this well, is when Henry Kissinger was, uh, was ruling international politics, we in this part of the world, in Central Europe, were on the bad side of the Iron Curtain. And keeping that equilibrium from the Cold War meant for millions of people being slaves, being imprisoned, being in the situation that people in Ukraine are right now. So from our perspective, this is something that is basically unacceptable. Uh, and... That brings me to, to another question, which is uh, one of the fundamental questions of the, of the international politics. And this is a question 
to you as a, as, 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 as a man who is, who is aware of the internal uh, the, the American politics. Uh, Republicans uh, in, the, in, in, the, in, in the United States uh, are very close to heritage of Ronald Reagan, of a great politician who made actually the, collab, the, the, the Soviet Union collapse. What is the reason for which uh, some significant personas on the, uh, on the American conservative uh, side are opposing support uh, of the United States uh, to Ukraine? And, and even they're even opposing this after Zelensky's powerful Churchill, Churchillian speech uh, in Washington. And when I heard that those words of Zelensky, I said, you know, this is the greatest battle for freedom against tyranny of our time. And Republicans, you know, use the rhetoric of liberty and freedom. People like Tucker Carlson and others. Uh, but for some reason, yes, they are uh, uh, some of them, a small minority, but very influential and powerful. And also uh, well-known people like Jordan Peterson are are somehow against Ukraine. Either they're afraid of Russia which means that somewhere their freedom rhetoric is a little bit empty. But I think for some, it's simply the uh, the partisan, uh, you know, you have two options in America, you're Republican or you're Democrat, and it's simply a reaction. It's a distrust of government. Uh, and if they understood the Maidan mentality of Ukraine, the revolution of dignity, they would realize Ukrainians distrust government perhaps more than the Republicans do in America. And there's one little piece of information that causes a lot of these misconceptions. Uh, uh, everyone from Tucker Carlson to other right-wing Americans say that uh, Joe, the, Joe Biden's son uh, made uh, money in the corrupt deals in Ukraine. And that's just not true. Uh, the company that Joe Biden's son worked with, corrupt or not, uh, Burisma, the guy that started it, that owns that company, was a member of the pro-Putin government that the Ukrainian people kicked out of Kiev in 2014. And only when uh, that... So, he, he was an energy minister in Yanukovych's government, and he fled to Moscow. Burisma was based in Moscow. And then after Putin took the Crimean Peninsula, Obama Biden sadly did not do much to did nothing to stop it. And two months after that, this company that benefited from Putin taking Crimea that's based in Moscow hired Hunter Biden. So it's not a Ukrainian uh, corporation that was paying Hunter Biden. It's a pro-Putin, pro-Russian corporation. And that one piece of information, because that so often is the talking point in, in some of these circles in America, that Ukraine is corrupt because of Biden, and, and that's, just not, that's just not true. It's actually, there, if, if there's any corruption, it's connections to Russia. And if that, maybe if that's cleared up, people can start to open their eyes. And I, and I do think Zelensky's speech was so passionate about a defense of a free nation under assault that uh, even some, some critics had to give him respect. And, and so I, I, I was very grateful for his visit. I think it's very important for and maybe people will start to see that this is the only reason this war is happening is because people in 2014 got out of line. They said, we will not be controlled by Putin. We will not be controlled by tyrants. And, and that's why this moment is happening. And so this really should appeal deeply to, to all, especially to Republicans. Uh, uh, I think of all the Republicans that have left California to go to Texas, they, they should be all 100% in favor of the greatest fight for freedom uh, in, 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 in our time. Joe, you mentioned Burisma case, the, the building of companies, the way that Burisma was built with uh, picking up former communist politicians from all over uh, former Soviet uh, empire is, is, is the very case, is the very sense of the post-communism uh, as a political system. And to, to make it clear to all the people who are asking this kind of questions, Think of one aspect. For some reason, Vladimir Putin uh, is being named by the intelligence agencies of the Western world the most wealthy man in the world. And you cannot become just <laughs> the, the most, the, the, the guy with the biggest amount of money in the world being a president of a uh, country without stealing money and without building the system of international corruption. And basically, this is the way that the system works. Joe, thanks for your take, for your presence. Well, and me out. One last thing. Let's always remember, in Russia, there's no freedom. There's no freedom of speech. So nothing that Republicans like is in Russia. Just remember that. For Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, we are aware of this fact, and me as a, as a, as a conservative journalist, journalist uh, from Central Europe, I'm a guy who's trying to, to understand it. And Joe uh, is right now in Ukraine witnessing all of those things. Joe, thanks a lot. See you next time. Thank you.